Hello everyone, this is Frank Andrews and this is the OK Tulsa podcast. Today is Saturday, October 24th. I've been holding off on doing a podcast every day because I thought it'd just be better to do a weekly podcast and then a week in recap because my weeks aren't that exciting to keep up with this. Plus, I don't know if you can already hear, but there's construction going on and it's been going on throughout throughout the day and it's extremely loud. It shakes the whole place. They are ripping off ripping out street, they're pounding the thing, so the whole building shakes. It's quite annoying because I have to deal with that and it's nonstop during the day and then when that finally ends and you think you have some peace and quiet, every single night this night and every single night I've been here, there's been people that come to the bar that's downstairs and then get drunk and then get in a fight inevitably afterwards and arguments. You see a male and a female arguing or Someone's having a breakdown, right? Some girl is got drunk, has issues with her boyfriends, yelling, screaming. One claimed she was going to kill her boyfriend by, and then throw everything she has at the kitchen on her kitchen sink at him, which was she was naming off fruits like apples, bananas, peaches. She was going to throw at him. It was quite humorous, but she was like really passionate about it. And she like, I don't care what happens, f him, f him, and things of that nature. So, anyways, I have to deal with that. The construction during the day, then these people at night. One of them was pretty funny last, not last night, the previous night. There was a woman who was calling all the men Mitches, which I think is hilarious because that word is just so funny. If you don't know what that word is, it's male bitches. And it was popularized in, I say, 2010s, 2010s. It was overused in this one show called The Real Husbands of, I want to say Hollywood. It had Kevin Hart. Nelly and Robin Thicke and some other people and they just constantly use that word so they kind of overused it but I thought that was humorous last night was more annoying than uh, the most annoying time so I hear people around you know the bars are closing it's around like 2 a.m there's a man that's constantly trying to proclaim how big he is and I, I know these people where the only interesting thing about them is their their size and they're extremely insecure so the only security they get is that people fear them based off their size i did i was trying to get a look at them through my window but i didn't see him so he must not be that big no i think it's because he was like underneath so i couldn't really see him but he was talking to some men about it he was literally talking about it for an hour but anyways according to him he's six foot six and so he just kept talking about like when people hear about that they're like oh i don't want to f with that guy i don't want to do this And then these other people weren't really respecting him, so he was getting upset. And then he claimed that he was fluent in Spanish. And then when the individuals called him out on it and asked him to just say the Spanish alphabet, he was very frustrated and annoyed and said that they were throwing, putting him on the spot, making him anxious. And then all of a sudden he just said he spoke a little Spanish. So he's one of those guys that he kept proclaiming something of truth and then he would run back when someone called him out. Then he got upset because someone, then two other guys showed up and he instantly wanted to talk about how big he was again. And they were like, yeah, you're really big and all this whatnot. But I'm assuming one of the guys was a wrestler in high school and he may have been really good because the guy said that he believed that the guy who was smaller than him would take the big guy down. And if you are familiar with wrestlers, if you're, if you actually know how to wrestle and someone else does not, you can take them down no matter how big they are right so i believe that but he was very upset about that so he was absurd and then after all that they're non-stop talking he was super loud they were like arguing i was like okay i can finally kind of sleep five minutes pass then a group of hyenas shows up like there's a there's a certain kind of laugh that sounds like a hyena laugh and I think you're familiar with that. It's like, <laughs> it's like the, they could have, this woman in particular, one of them had the cackle of a hyena or the wicked witch. Either or she would be perfect for if they made, if they tried to revamp you know, the Wizard of Oz. The only issue with it is it's already live. Maybe they just do everything CGI, right? The Disney wants to always do that. So if they need someone to do a laugh, she would be perfect or they want to do a Lion King too, and they need the hyenas to laugh. 
So she was super loud. I put my AirPods in to try to sleep. It was like past 2 a.m. already. It's 40 degrees outside, so I don't know why. Everyone's just chilling out there and acting like it's a great night. And bars are closed. I'm like, oh my gosh, why are you showing up? So I don't know if they just poured out of the bar. Anyways, I put my AirPods in and then I woke up like 20, 30 minutes later and it was quiet. I was like, oh, I can take them out because I don't know if you are comfortable with this, but I'm not comfortable really with keeping my AirPods in when I'm sleeping. It's not that, it's not the most comfortable. I can do it, but I don't like it. Especially if like you roll over and things that could fall out. So that was, it was quiet for a little bit. And then all of a sudden a car pulls up and there's just a bunch of drunk guys that come out, come out of the car and they like go to the door and like, it's closed. And it's like 3 a.m. So it was like, of course the bars are going to be closed. And then they start talking out there. And then I put my AirPods back in like, hey, this is ridiculous. Then next thing you know, I hear this through my AirPods around like four, someone screaming, this girl saying she got punched in the face. And she says she's bleeding in her eye. And the guy's like screaming at her and he's like, Crystal, I think that was her name. I don't want to call her out, but anyways. Uh, they start arguing, then him and some other guys start arguing, and then she's yelling about someone punching her in the face and talking about how she had to keep herself uh, reserved so she doesn't beat that girl down or something. And that was the whole issue. Then I think I heard the other woman come out later, like an hour later, and she was screaming and crying, and it was just like nonstop all night for until like 5 a.m. And it just kept waking me up. I'm like, this is the most annoying thing. This is hell. I, I just couldn't believe it. And this happened every night, by the way. Not to this extreme level, but there is constantly... Since I've been here this whole month, there's always people like talking. It's sometimes not that bad. But throughout, there's just always been some sort of fight. With some girls screaming and crying, and then the friends either trying to calm her down. I mean, and so I was... Yeah. I, the thing about that, too, is like, handle your liquor. Like, there's certain kinds of people for they're just not fun to be around when they're drunk. It's like you clearly have a lot of issues that you're not fixing in yourself and getting drunk just exasperates them and you become just a blit, like uh, obnoxious and in hysterics and clearly all these people cannot do it. They have some emotional issues and then they get drunk and then it all comes out and pouring out. It's the worst thing to do. Right? You get emotional, you get angry like this. It just sounds, sounds horrendous. This, the clientele keep coming to this bar. They need to go. The, they, hopefully, there's a psychologist, a therapist, something. They need to work out some issues. Maybe take some, I don't know, psychedelics or something. I think that forces you to confront your unconscious, all those repressions. Have some introspection. It's bad. But so I have to deal with the daytime construction, the nighttime drunkards, and then on top of that, the Wi-Fi in this building is horrendous. It is. I, I'm starting to think the Airbnb host bought, if, if there, is there something lower than dial up? Is it five millibytes per second download speeds? It never works. Even when I go on my data for some reason, I think it's, it has to do with the building. I turn my phone off Wi-Fi just to go straight up data. It still won't run half the time. And it's just, it's infuriating because if I want to do any kind of work, I can't go to the library because you're not allowed to sit there. Right? You can go in and get books, but can't, you can't sit inside. Uh, my co-working space is 20 minutes away, so it's like I have to go there anytime I want to do any kind of work because the Wi-Fi works there. But then it's never that fun to be there because it's like the whole COVID issue, you can't really just relax. So I've been annoyed with that. Um, also this week, it, on a Wednesday, a Tuesday, Tuesday I was walking around, I came, went to the library, I checked out a book, um, I'll talk about the book after. So I checked it out, out a book, and then I was going to get pokey, because I, last time I had it, it was phenomenal, and I was hungry, I wanted something pretty healthy and quick, I didn't want to wait to like, order and walk, so anyways, I was walking, a truck is, there's this phenomenon that doesn't have a scientific name, yet we all experience it, which is the feeling of being stared at. I think it's a natural sense that we all have. And it's obvious, if you think about it like an evolutionary standpoint, it makes sense. You would want to know if someone's staring at you, right, for your safety. So anyways, I felt someone staring at me hard and I look and it's like these two people in a truck when I'm walking. And so I look 
and then the woman is like wearing sunglasses i can't see the man and she waves and so i wave and smile and then i hear the guy honking afterwards but i think that i thought it was just like okay it's playful whatever i'm walking i don't really think much of it the next block the truck pulls around again and it's like honking me i'm like oh shit and i thought like the man was going to be upset that i waved at his woman or something so i was going to be like oh man i apologize i don't want to deal with this so they pull up and pull in front of me so i can't really walk around and then they ask out the window like hey do you want to be in a movie and i say what instantly i'm thinking that they want me to be in some sort of dirty movie and so i'm going to have to decline but they were saying very nice compliments to me and they were filming some film it's called unplugging they wanted to know if i wanted to be an extra in it but i had to be like thursday it was just all thrown on and at that moment i was excited because i was like oh that'd be cool it's kind of a cool experience so he gave me you know got my number he sent me some information I did a look up before I sent them information because I wanted to make sure it wasn't a scam. It isn't. There's some film that's being filmed in Tulsa. I think par partially, I don't know if it's fully. It's It seems like, I don't know, it's not the, it's not like a huge budget film, but I think it's not low budget either. It's not like an independent filmmaker. The director is, I think she she's an editor for a lot of movies like Hangover, Due Dates, all the Hangovers, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, all those big time Hollywood films, Transformers, but I, she, her directing, I think she only directed a TV series, so she was directing this film. It's supposed to be a comedy, it has like Eva Longoria in it, and I think Matt Walsh. I don't know. But it was supposed to be an office scene. I didn't, I don't really have the clothes for it. The man told me that I would be fine, but I had to get a COVID test that day or the next day. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'll do it. He didn't tell me what time was going to be on Thursday, by the way. So I just said, well, I'm pretty flexible, but you know, mornings are t typically tough for me because I do have to do work for my other job. But I didn't really think about it. I thought, mm hmm, the universe kind of works in weird ways. Let me just try out. You never know. There could be opportunities afterwards. So the next morning, I go, I take a lift to go to the spot because where they're doing COVID tests with the company so I can get a free one and where they send off that my lab results to them. It's about 15 minutes away. Of course, I don't have a car, so I need to get a lift, and it's a drive through one, too. The lady picks me up. I tell her about it. Everything of that nature. First off, I hate when people do this. Lyft drivers and Uber drivers have done this before, and it almost seems like they're scamming you, but I don't think this was her case. There's sometimes, this has only been rare. Usually, it doesn't feel like they're scamming you. They just may think that they're knowing the road, and they won't follow their navigation, which is the most infuriating thing, because it's, because it's, the navigation on those apps is going to be the best. It, they already mapped it out. They know the best route. They know the quickest route. Take that. Follow that. Don't try to do your own thing. But anyways, this lady tries to do it. I don't really think too much about it because I, I'm too busy. I'm too concerned about like her trying to... I'm trying to do like a stop because I have to stay in the car, get the test, and then drive back. Right? I don't want to get out. I can't get out and wait. So... And Lyft takes forever to find drivers. There's less Lyft drivers than there are Uber, but Lyft is cheaper. So she's taking the wrong route. She It's all for Utica, so she goes, I think she thinks like it's a different route on Utica. Anyways, 15 minutes pass. Finally, she realizes she doesn't know where she is. And she looks in the map, and I wasn't paying attention because we are just kind of talk talking. And it's 15 more minutes away, so she literally drove 15 minutes in the wrong direction. And I'm just annoyed at this point. So I take out my GPS and then I'm directing there. But I just can't stand when people do that because instantly your Lyft ride and Uber ride jumps up because you're just taking gets an extra trip. Instead of just a trip there and back, now it's a trip elsewhere there and back. So it gives you an extra time. Like, yeah, it made it more expensive. The final cost was $30 for that round trip to go two miles, two point something miles, about three miles. There and back, so like six miles but $30 for the COVID test, which was horrendous. When I pull up, it's it's like, it looks sketch. There's no one outside. I had to walk around, the buildings are all locked. Thankfully, some woman who was just coming to work had asked me if I needed help, and I told her, yeah, so she brought a guy out. He, they shoved the Q-tip down your nose for five seconds. It's a long five seconds. It's a five Mississippi count, but maybe two Mississippis. And it hurts. And it doesn't really hurt. It's just super uncomfortable because the Q-tip is super long and they just keep pushing it down your nostril. 
And so, of course, it makes your eyes water and it's so uncomfortable and you hate it. Um, I'm COVID free, but that's great. So anyways, I do that. I'm talking to the lady, telling her about how, you know, I'm new here and why I'm getting the COVID test. Oh, after I get the COVID test, she asked me like, oh, so now you can work, right? Because I said I needed it for, to go onto the job site, which you had to do. You had to clear, you had to be clear of COVID to be able to be on the film set. And so I was like, oh yeah, it's actually not for work. I'm working remote, but it was for this film. I told her about what happened and she was like, that's weird. And she instantly was trying to make it seem like I was claiming a, a lie. I'm like, you saw me, you, they have, I told the person right in front of her face, like, oh, it's for this film called Unplugging. They knew it. So it wasn't like I was lying. I was like, why would I lie about being an extra in some film that nobody's ever heard of and probably won't ever hear of? She was acting as if I was claiming I was going to be, going to be in the new Avatar film as a lead role or you know, oh, one of the new Avengers, I was going to be one of the superheroes or something of that nature. Like, And she's like, I never heard of it. I didn't know that was going on. And I'm like, just because you never heard of it doesn't mean it's not happening. She's, And this was another frustrating thing that occurs quite frequently, but especially with this lady, she was an older lady, was when I told her that I was new here, she is not from Tulsa. She's, in a, she's a grandmother, so she's like maybe early 60s. She's lived in Tulsa the last 10 years, she said. She lived elsewhere in Oklahoma, but she liked it and moved here. But she was acting like this. She grew up here like this is her hometown. She's like, yeah, I hear we just like love our, like she kept saying like, we, we, we. 10 years is a long time, I get it. But in the span of your life, it's not that long. If she's a grandmother, like if she was 10 years of her life and she's in her 20s or 30s, like, okay, makes sense. It's a third of your life, half of your life, but yeah, a third of your life at that point. But not at this moment, you lived your whole life, you've had your kids, you're now just kind of transitioning into this older, this late stage of your life. But she was acting like she grew up in this town, like she knew everything about it, she's trying to point out things, show me around. And I get it because she's lived here longer than me, now she got excited, but she was making it seem as if this was her town. And if she doesn't know about a film getting made, that's not happening. And I was like, what, uh, whatever. So what was annoying about it too was not only that, she was making it seem like me being an extra in some film that n no one's heard of is going, is outrageous. But then she was trying to convince me about her five-year-old son, not son, I meant grandson, five-year-old grandson, who's this boy genius. He is Leibniz mix mixed with Stephen Hawking and Neil deGrasse Tyson. And this always happens with grandparents in particular more so than parents and I get it they're proud of the grandparents want to brag about them I mean grandchildren they want to brag about them they want to make it seem like they're far more precocious than they actually are she was making it seem like this kid was just you know extremely precocious he was she was claiming he knows you know cosmology he knows astronomy he knows mathematics he loves science. He He's great with all these different things, computers. It's like, yeah, he probably does technology. He probably is able to know the planets, right? Like in, she says that he started kindergarten, he's way too advanced and he's always bored. And perhaps he maybe, but the thing she's making it seem is, she was really making it seem like he's just this amazing genius that can name all these things. And perhaps it is true, but I don't know, right? She's saying that he watches YouTube videos and he was seeing some video about all the planets and no one was getting it right and he was getting frustrated and finally he was saying the right answers with the, this one woman and then he was checking out these science videos about anatomy and looking at the body and how it works and I was like he sounds like a serial killer no I was joking about that part and like he's doing calculus equations and I was like this is all a bunch of like I don't know I'm I'm sure it's exaggerated I'm sure he probably does watch science videos I'm sure he knows the planets I'm sure you can do some mathematics. You can count to 100 when everyone else is counting to 10. That's what she claimed, right? This might be true, but I think it's exaggerated to a certain extent. But I know that grandparents do that in particular. My grandmother does it with my cousin's kids all the time. And she always has three things in particular that she finds very important, which aren't that important. But it's always like how big they are, how cute they are and how smart they are that's all she always talks about and then you show up 
you see these kids and she's making them seem like the baby Einstein as well. And the kid is like sucking on a penny or shoving his face with ice cream. And then you're like, no wonder he's so big. This kid is literally obese. I have a baby cousin that actually is extremely obese. I think she's five, but she wears, um, she her size is like, I wanna say like a, a youth large, but she's like five years old. She's, I think the size of like a 13 year old, but she's always been this huge. And so it's like, yeah, she's always, she's definitely big, but that makes sense because she has diabetes already. So yeah, so that was that. Oh, also there's another one that, I think it just, it, it seems like people are insecure sometimes about these things and they want to instantly proclaim something. What I say, let me just explain. I'm all over the place, I'm sorry. But when I was dropping off my car before I moved to Tulsa, I was at the Hyundai dealership. There's an older woman. She, we had a pleasant conversation. She was from Louisiana. She was one of those women that calls you like sweetheart with an accent and it's very nurturing and calming. And she was telling me about her grandchildren as well. And the youngest was now 18 and she was just graduated high school. I said, oh, that's amazing. Like, what's she going to do now afterwards? Is she going to go to school? Well, first I was like, she's just gonna go into the workforce or she's going to go to school. And I am more of the newer generation that understand that that understands that college is just, you know, kind of a scam at this point and just gets you in debt. It's not like the end all be all, but I understand it's still important because people want the degrees at these companies. But anyways, when I said school, she instantly was like, yeah, yeah, she's going to school. And she's like, I was like, oh, it's cool. Where is she going? And then she was like thinking for a second. She's like, well, you know, she's going to UCLA. Uh, she may go to UCLA. She may go to Harvard, uh, Cambridge. Once again, maybe, but I doubt it. She just wanted to try to think of these great schools. And I'm like, oh, that's really amazing. Like these prestigious schools. And she's like, yeah. And the way she was making it seem, it seemed like she was lying. But it's like, that's something that you don't have to lie to. Like, I wouldn't, you don't have to impress me. I, mean, I don't really care. She would, could have said that she was going to community college. I still think that's a great idea. I think that's a better idea. You only get a full time, like do your two years of community, it's the same thing and transfer. But um, yeah, she was instantly making it seem like that. So, and this is what the, the lady was making it seem as well about her kid, like her her home and my, my uh, driver for Tulsa. She wanted to show me some things too. So it wasn't that bad that she took a bunch of wrong routes and a long trip because she showed me the gathering place, River Parks, and it was cool to see. I know I can ride a bike there now, which would be awesome. I want to do that when the weather is great. I should have done that that morning, but I had work to do. And so I ended up missing that film, by the way. I had to actually do work. It was at 7 a.m. and I didn't know how long it was going to be. I didn't even have the outfits needed. The guy said it wouldn't matter that I could, he, I could borrow his, but he never contacted me back about like going to his house and trying something things on because he needed like five replacements or at least three different suits in a way business attire which i didn't have and i'm riding a scooter or walking there so i don't i'm gonna have to carry all these things so it just seemed impractical and then when i heard it was at 7 a.m i was like oh well i actually have to do work and be available for my my job so that was unfortunate. There goes my movie career. I could have been the next Leo DiCaprio, but no. But yeah, so that lady, anyways, I told her I was living in downtown and then instantly she's like, oh, I lived in downtown. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And she's told me about the downtown she lived in. And then she told me about her house and how it's so big and how she has a big, beautiful yard. I'm like, that's amazing. And so once again, it was like this, there's never been this comparison thing, but people, instantly sometimes get so defensive and insecure and they want to constantly elevate themselves once again and you just like it seems desperate especially when you're at that age like you're in your 60s like why do you have to try to impress these impress me we're trying to secure like i don't care but yeah uh so anyways that was a waste of a trip but at least i got to see about the best part was just seeing the gathering place in the parks and that area over there is very beautiful there's amazing huge homes right uh they're nice to look at they they look very um 
prestigious, prestigious and something you can admire. But the whole area looks really nice. So I do want to go when the weather's great and check out, you know, the river parks and the gathering place. But what I, I wanted to also talk about is at the library, I was, I've been really into the Fitzgeralds, F. Scott Fitzgerald and Zelda because I stumbled upon that show, but I stopped watching that show because it was terrible. Uh, but I wanted to read Tinder is a Night, which is Fitzgerald's last, well, he, his last completed novel. He wrote The Last Tycoon, but he died before he finished it. But Tinder is a Night was the, the book after The Great Gatsby. It was his follow-up book. And why I wanted to read it was because F. Scott Fitzgerald himself said that this book was better than The Great Gatsby. He was saying that this was his masterpiece. And other individuals online were trying to say so too. And so I, I was like, well, I want to check it out because it sold poorly and it didn't really get that great of reviews. But I was like, maybe it was misunderstood. Maybe he really did create something of a masterpiece that was unrecognized. And it, it's this cherished piece that should, well, this piece that should be cherished more so than Gatsby. So I check it out and I quickly realized why this book sold so poorly because it is not good. It is not better than Gatsby. He either claimed it and said it, because he wrote it and said this being greater than Gatsby to his editor at Scribner's. Therefore, my assumption would be he was saying this because at the time he was, he was always needing money. He was a lavish spender. He always overspent. He was constantly drinking and just, yeah, he was irresponsible in that regard. So he may just needed money, wanted to hype himself up, and wanted to get them excited to be like, this is my, I swear this is the best novel. And either that, or he was extremely drunk when he read it, and when he wrote that message. And of course, as we know, drinking impairs judgment. Therefore, he, his judgment was extremely impaired when he tried to say that this book was better than The Great Gatsby. It's not. I would not recommend it. I went, I went, I didn't finish it. I. So maybe it gets way better at the end, but I was 180 pages in and it still was not good. And I was like, I'm not gonna waste my time. I'm going to do uh, what, I don't even remember the French philo philosopher who used to say this, but there's one that does says not to waste time with books. If they're not, if they bore him, he just closes them up. So sometimes it's not worth just reading it through. Same with like films and stuff. If the film is not captivating, I'll turn it off because I don't want to waste more time or shows. Like I won't finish it through. But 180 pages in, it wasn't good. He, the characters are always shallow in his books because it was like trying to capture that age. But these ones were like uninteresting. At least the, the shallow characters in Gatsby did have like, even though they appeared to be shallow, there was a bunch of deeper meanings behind their actions. Like that you could recognize that these people had issues and there's a deeper reason for why they're coming off so shallow right and it's it's pretty much his life at the french riviera it's based off a lot off charles and sarah murphy and the time there which was pretty cool because they had that whole group the fitzgeralds hemingway uh, pablo picasso was part of for a little bit uh john dos passos eric satie like you know gertrude stein these kind of people but in Paris, but the French Riviera, I think, was more just the Murphys and Hemingway and the Fitzgeralds. But what I don't like about it is it's annoying in these, this book and in other ones, but particularly for this one, he just goes on these long passages in French, doesn't give a footnote, doesn't give a translation. And my assumption is, is he expecting every reader who's ever read this book to know French? So maybe that's where the good parts lie in the French. And yeah, it's frustrating when they do that. Uh, Charlotte Bronte has it in Jane Eyre, but the publisher from Barnes Noble at least made footnotes for all those long passages in French so you can translate them. And then sometimes like when I read Nietzsche or Carl Jung, they're, they say words in Latin. And uh, weirdly, sometimes the translators have the footnotes for the translations and other times they don't. And I'm assuming like sometimes Latin words are we use Latin words we don't know but not all of them are common so it's frustrating or Carl Jung has a lot of times he'll he'll say a Greek word but he'll use the Greek alphabet too and so it's just 
it looks like gibberish to me because I, I'm not I'm not that intelligent to know all that and so I I hate when that happens like can you not just give especially these people because they have tons of footnotes and it's like why can't you give me a footnote there to know what that word means why can't you just say the word in English why does it have to show up in Greek why do you have to say this in French I get it if you want to make the book but at least have the translation so people can actually know what you're saying because you're just throwing gibberish out there to people if they don't know the language so he does that in this book but yeah the book is terrible I would not recommend it it's uninteresting yeah it doesn't hold you it's just yeah not great. Um, I ate at an Asian fusion restaurant. Uh, it was pretty good. It's relatively cheap and they give you a decent amount of food. Well, actually, no, it makes sense. It's more like, it's kind of like cafeteria food, but it was good. Uh, I liked their tea. It was, that was nice, but otherwise it was, it wasn't the best. And I had this, I think it's a Greek restaurant. I think it was, it's a Mediterranean restaurant of some sort. You know, they have kebabs rice hummus the hummus sandwich was good with had like turkey and things uh the kebabs were not good they were very poorly cooked the salmon was all right but the steak was extremely tough and chewy so the person overcooked it and the rice itself was just it uh there was also a huge thunderstorm the other night so i got to experience the oklahoma volatile weather and the oklahoma thunderstorms and it was pretty marvelous to see it woke me up of course that night it was loud but seeing it all lit up looks really cool it's intriguing it's compelling I tried to go out on Thursday because it was a warm night and I was feeling great and I thought hmm, I'll check it out it was like 10 p.m. I decided to walk it was a ghost town I was walking through downtown but it was a nice night so I was enjoying it and then I walked towards the Blue Dome district because that's where a lot of bars are and everything just looked dead and empty and even the Route 66 bar at the Hotel Indigo where I went to that one Saturday night last time it was so packed so I thought maybe people weren't out yet at the bars because they're pre-gaming or just enjoying a drink elsewhere but the Yoko Zuna the sushi restaurant was like all closed down these other spots were kind of closed down there was just some stragglers around and then the rooftop bar had nobody up there therefore i and i did a whole wander about one of the bars says it was open it wasn't which i hate when it says on their online website that they're open change it to actually represent what you're actually doing so yeah i didn't do didn't go out because nothing was really open which was surprising and then i just rode the scooter back i didn't go out last night I just was super tired but tonight I'll try I'm going to try I may go to the Gilcrease Museum today but I'm not sure it's just very difficult with not having a car right with Lyft and Ubers it just adds up so much more like I'm not paying the $8 admission ticket I'm paying $30 plus the eight so almost $40 if I do a tip $40 museum you know attraction like it doesn't even cost $40 to get into the Met or the Louvre so I'm, or the Vatican. I'm paying $40, right, to go to the Gilcrease. It's not like I'm trying to denigrate the Gilcrease. I'm sure it's an amazing museum, but just the expenses of going back and forth when you don't have your own mode of transportation is a nuisance. I have to see how far it is, maybe if I can try to ride a scooter there. If it's not too cold. But yeah, otherwise, uh, if I, I may try to do the Guthrie Center. I'm not a big fan. I, I don't even know Woody Guthrie. That's the thing. So I don't know if I'll get excited about it. I don't know if I would really appreciate it. I would have to be somebody that actually does appreciate who that person is to really enjoy it. But maybe I'll do that. It's close by. I can walk there. I don't have to drive. Or do the river parks. I haven't checked the weather. I think it's still very cold. I think it's still like 50 degrees. Maybe not. But it'd be really fun to do some bike riding, check out the park. Because I want to be able to sit there, enjoy, read, look at the sculptures. It's a huge, it's a huge, um, it has like multiple segments. And they even have a, this tunnel to get into the gathering place and the area of it. And they're building a ton. They have basketball courts and all this. But what I like about it is there's, they built like, or they left 
it to have grass and an overgrowth on the tunnel. So it almost looks like a Disneyland attraction. It doesn't look like you're just destroying all this nature. It's like a perfect blend. So I really admired that. But anyways, thank you for listening to the OK Tulsa podcast. I will give you a recap of my weekend, either a Sunday night or Monday morning or Monday afternoon. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.